Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and this is the uh, section one of chapter 11 lesson in, from Big Ideas. It's on circumference and arc length. So let's take a look at it and see what we got. Um, over here, we're going to start off with the definition of a circle, which you should already know. And the circle is a set of all points equidistant from a given point. We can also write it as the locus of points in a plane that are a fixed distance from a point and so equidistant from a given point, and this given point we will call the center. So a circle is named by the symbol, and we have a radius, and we have a diameter, we have all the good things. So the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, which you should already know, and we can also say that it's pi times a diameter. And the way we figure this out is simply, I mean, you could, there's so many different methods, but you could take a string, this isn't exact, but you could measure a circular object and then straighten it out and measure the length of it. But what you end up finding out is that whenever you have the diameter and then you know this length right there, you always end up with a ratio that the circumference to the diameter always equals this pi ratio. And that's where we came up with the formula pi times the diameter is the circumference because we could measure this with a string going around. That's just one of the different ways. But in grade school, you covered a lot of that. And then you can use the formula for the circumference to find the uh, formula for the circumference to find the area. Here is one method. There are plenty of other methods, but here is one. Suppose we take all these pi shapes. So I crisscross and cut this up, and I have these little triangular pi-looking shapes. They're not quite triangular because the tops have these little bits of curvature on them, right? But they're like that. But this is a radius, that's a radius, and I can also say that that's a radius up to the top curvature part. So this is a radius, that's a radius. I could take it from this point to the curvature here, the middle of that, that's a radius. But what you end up having is almost like a parallelogram type shape. What we know all the way around is 2 pi r, right? Because we solved that up here, and that means that all of these little pieces, these bottom ones and the top ones together are 2 pi r. So if I just have the length here, it's pi r. And then I know the height here is this radius. So pi r times r gives me pi r squared. The approximation gets better the smaller the little pi shapes you make, these triangular pi looking shapes. If you make them infinitely small, then we can say, or take something later you'll learn, in trigonometry and calculus, it's called the limit, you will get this situation. And for our, for our uh, problems, we're going to just use 3.14 for pi, or sometimes we'll just leave it in terms of pi, and just you just do your answer and put a pi on the end of it. All right, so let's see what else we got. And then arc length right here, we're going to cover right now. So arc length is what this, right, length of this will be. Well, I know that all the way around is 2 times pi times the radius, right? So, but I don't want the whole thing. So I want 2 pi r, that would give me the whole. Right here would give me the whole, but I don't want that. I only want a portion of that whole. So if I only want out of 360, this m degrees, that's my portion. So it's the portion times the whole would give me this arc length right in here. Okay? Now, we can measure angles in another form. And I've talked to you about this earlier. And I had told you when we did um, in Chapter 9, when we did some calculations, I said, well, I want you to stay in degrees. Well, degrees is not the only method. I've taught you that degrees is arbitrary. Why 360? Who came up with that? We went through all that, so the Babylonians, the whole bit, about 360 days until we make a full rotation around the sun. Those are all kind of ways that they came up with that number 360, but mathematicians don't like it. So instead, mathematicians wanted to be precise. They wanted to say, okay, what can we do to make this an exact measure instead of this arbitrary 360 number. So they came up with this. It's called a radian. Well, what the heck is a radian? Well, radian is a form of measuring angles. Just like you have, I'll relate it to like 
inches and meters. You can think of it as units. It's a different type of unit of measuring an angle. Well, here's what a radian is. If you take this radius and that radius, but then you make this arc length right here, the same exact length of each of these radius, well, the angle that's formed here is one radian. So I can make another radian and another radian and another... Guess how many radians I can make all the way around a circle? Surprising answer, and it's mathematical and it comes out pure. You could make two pi radians in one complete rotation of a circle. Exactly. Wait a minute. Where do we know 2 pi r? The circumference is 2 pi r. So look at how that works out perfectly for mathematicians. And it's like, it's, it, it's amazing in that this, all the way around, the circumference is 2 pi r, and then the radian measure will be 2 pi times r, radian, which is 2 pi radians. So in any case, how do you relate radians to degrees? Well, 2 pi radians is going to be 360 degrees. It's like a unit conversion, just like you do inches to meters, etc., inches to centimeters. It's a conversion, and that's all we're going to do is we'll set it up as 2 pi over 360 equals radians over degrees. Remember, the pi goes with the radians, the 360 goes with the degrees. Now, also on this, you can, you can set it up as x over 180 equals the radians over the degrees. That works as well. But I like, to use, I like you to use 2 pi, so you always remember that relationship. 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. All right, moving on over here. That's just what I talked about. So in our student journals, let's turn to page 318, and we're going to do examples 1 through 7. All right, so let's take a look at these. The first one says the diameter of a circle with the circumference of 10 inches, and we need to find the indicated measure. So we need to find that diameter, and they tell us the diameter of a circle with a circumference of 10. The circumference is 2 pi r, and we know that the circumference is 10 divided by 2 pi times r. So this will give me 5 over pi, is your radius, so that means we multiply this by 2, so 10 over pi is the diameter. On the next one, the circumference of a circle with a radius 3 centimeters, so now the radius is 3, the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, so 2 times pi times 3 will give me 6 pi, and I forgot to put the units here, this is inches, and this is going to be centimeters. Okay, the radius of a circle with a circumference of 8 feet. So the circumference is 2 pi r, which is 8, and we need the radius. So that means the radius will be 8 divided by 2 pi, which will be 4 over pi feet. Then moving on to number 4, we need the circumference of a circle with a diameter of 2.4. So the circumference is 2 pi r, or it's pi times the diameter, and the diameter is 2.4, so we're just going to leave it at 2.4 pi meters. And then here we need to find this arc length. All right, so we have 70 degrees. So we said that all the way around is 2 pi r, but we don't want the whole thing. This is the whole. We only need a part. We need 70 out of the 360 of this 2 pi r for this arc length of AC. So the measure of arc AC is going to end up being 70 over 360 times 2 pi, and they give me this R as 3, so this will be 70 over 360. This is 3 times 6 pi. So the measure of arc AC is going to end up being this. We'll reduce with this to be 60, and we'll have um, 7 over 6 pi, and the units here are inches. For the next one, we've got to do some conversions. On this first one, we have to convert to uh, 60 degrees to radians. So we know that 2 pi over 360 is our conversion, 
This is 60 degrees. I'll put the degrees with the degrees, and I'll put my x, because that's what I want to solve for for the radians. The 2 pi goes with the radians. So now we just simply cross multiply. I will have 2 pi times 60 over 360 is my x. So 60 and 360 will reduce to be 1 sixth. So I end up with 2 pi over 6. These will reduce. I'll end up with pi over 3 radians is what x is. And finally, the last one, we're converting from radians to degrees this time. So for this one, I've got 5 pi over 6 as my radians, and I know that we have 2 pi over 360. This will be 5 pi over 6 over x, because I need degrees. There's my degrees. My radians go with my radians. My degrees goes with my degrees. So now cross multiply. So I end up with 2 pi times the x equals the 360 times the 5 pi over 6. Okay, let's reduce this first and see what we can do with it. So this 6 goes into 360 60 times, and then when I multiply this, I'll get 300 pi. On this side, I have 2 pi times x. The pi's will reduce, and then divide by 2, so x will be 150 degrees. All right, so hopefully this uh, lesson wasn't too bad. Um, hopefully you understand the conversion between radians and degrees, and you understand um, why we're going to start using degrees a little, or radians a little bit. It's just a better, uh, easier form of um, measuring, even though we're so stuck on 360 and we're used to it, but mathematicians like to be precise, and radians is the precise way. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.